What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another Pioneer video and today we're going to be taking a look at a deck that has been a long time since it's shown up here and uh, very happy to see it back. It's an archetype that I kind of like fumble around with and I think about from time to time and Pioneer because usually it's an archetype that is pretty good uh, and while I don't think the conditions and stuff are necessarily good for it, actually I think it's probably even worse now than it was before, but uh, managed to find a place near the top of the Pioneer Challenge that took place this past weekend. So, of course, before we get too deep into the Obzon Elves deck that took second place at the Pioneer Challenge, uh, I would appreciate it if you're not already subscribed to the channel, that you do so and ring the notification bell so you know when videos get posted. I also post modern content as well as other Pioneer content and uh, essay videos and the like. So, if that interests you, subscribe all that fun happy stuff i also have the link in the description down below for this deck list along with the discord server link as well go ahead and follow over there and feel free to join so here we have obzon elves second place pioneer challenge and normally when you think of elves you definitely think of you know your mana dorks you know, you're like one cost creatures and then you have your, like your lords and you have ways to just make tons and tons of mana and have some sort of payoff and i think what we would see from elf decks before you would see kind of that where it's just a ton of these like one mana elves and then some of the two and three mana lords and then you have you know something to kind of put you over the top or just get a huge burst of you know uh, action on the board be it through like collect a company or quarter calling and typically you wouldn't see these cards together, but in Elves, normally like this is like the only non-creature spell that they're willing to play. Um, and I think this version takes a completely different road uh, and makes it super simple on what it's trying to do. So you have your typical Lane War Elves, Elvish Mystic, both of these, uh, you know, pay a green, get a 1-1 one, one Elf that then taps for a green mana. Uh, and then you have Jaspira Sentinel and uh, Sentinel or Satanual Stalwart, which both tap an untapped uh, creature you control to add a mana of any color. Uh, Stalwart has the added bonus of getting to tap an artifact. Uh, the, I don't think that really comes up that much in this deck, uh, if ever. Uh, you could technically, I guess, do it with Provoker, but kind of does the same thing. Uh, I guess with this, if you get like a Power Stone token, you can make that Power Stone essentially produce mana, which I guess is pretty neat. Uh, but, you know, all these, you have, you know, 4, 8, 12, 14, essentially one-drop creatures, where six of them need a little bit of help needing another creature. But uh, for with eight uh, mana dorks that just add a green mana straight up, you know, pretty good is a way that you can kind of uh, boost into these three drops that you have here and, of course, get into bigger quarter callings and a cast collected company. Moving on, you have uh, another 12 one drops in the deck. You have this Elvish Warmaster, Dwayne's Elite, and Leaf Crown Visionary. Leaf Crown Visionary is kind of what's going to help this deck uh, with such a low curve. I mean, we went th through you know how many ones and two drops this deck has. Whenever you cast an elf spell, you can pay a green draw card, and it is also a lord in itself. So the fact that you can spend two mana to play a mystic and draw a card, and then play a Jaspira Sentinel and draw a card, or even pay like three mana to get a Dwayne's Elite and draw a card, you just end up creating and adding so much mana on top of adding so many uh, so much power and toughness to the board, while also making sure that your hand's refilled so you can kind of play around getting Wrath, where even if you spill your hand on the board and your opponent has it, you have a handful of cards, more than likely you're going to be able to uh, rebuild from that position and uh, with more copies of leaf crown visionary you're able to continue to kind of rebuild uh, with you know the massive mana hit your land drops all that war master says whenever one or more elves enters the battlefield you control you create a one one and this ability only triggers once each turn so you could play a war master and then follow it up with like an elvish mystic and then you end up getting a one one uh, also kind of feeding into this, you know, going wide and playing uh, like a Leaf Crown Visionary or even activating Elvish War Master's ability to give Elves you control plus two plus two and Death Touch is a way that you can Alpha Strike, you know, get in damage and force your opponent to make some bad trades on top of just outright winning the game just by giving all your creatures plus two plus two having gone wide enough. 
Uh, finally, you have Dwayne's Elite, arguably the weaker of the two, obviously because they all have a lot of utility. But the fact that this card, when it enters, if you control another elf, you get to create a 1-1 uh, elf warrior token. Uh, just adds, you know, three power to the board for two mana, very good rate. And on top of that, you know, getting to essentially add more power thanks to, like, these Leaf Crown Visionaries giving elves you control plus one plus one. Goes from adding three power to five power for two mana, which is very powerful, considering that usually, like, the rate is, like, a four mana six six. You know, you have a two mana, like, five five, you know, which is pretty neat. Uh, here at the top end is kind of where you get some, like, finishers-ish in a Shaman of the Pack, which makes an opponent... Uh, target opponent lose life equal to the number of elves you control is just a way that you can win the game out of nowhere you can end up making you know like six eight ten elves draining your opponent for that much and then just what you have on board unpumped you know no lords you could probably just end up winning the game that way shaman of the pack has been ending games that way really since it's existed and ever since elves has been a notable archetype in either the modern or pioneer format so definitely a card that uh i think people don't really expect but you know is pretty sweet shaman of the pack also having some utility and stuff with like collected company in that if you hit like two of them or you know you whatever uh you can end up stacking things to where uh you have all of your triggers resolved to you know make your elves whether it's like war master dwayne's elite so on and then shaman of the pack uh can resolve its trigger so uh it won't check when it enters and then that's the number it, it'll check like when it goes to resolve so you are able to essentially get in like a few more points of damage uh, with you know stacking those triggers correctly and then there's a new card from the wilds of eldraine set in where fox bodyguard which happens to be an elf but it looks nothing like an elf at all except maybe it's a tree person uh three mana two two with flash when it enters the battlefield it gives up to one other target non-fox creature until where fox bodyguard leaves the battlefield and you can sacrifice it to gain two life obviously you don't have it for that last ability but where fox bodyguard can kind of do some things where you can save one of your own creatures uh, you, like you can save a uh, leaf crown visionary from a removal spell and while it negatively affects you and you know in that short term uh, if you do this like in response to, like a wrath or something like that you end up getting the leaf crown visionary back which means then that you can kind of start this chain all over again of playing cheap elves and then continuing to pay green mana to draw cards and eventually rebuild back your board you can also just use this offensively by getting rid of like you know part shield or something like that and then getting in tons and tons of damage it also just gets pumped by you know your lord effects triggers your elvish war master etc uh, of course, we, we touched on Court of Calling, Collected Company. I mean, these are just powerful ways of getting the elves that you want in play. Where Court of Calling, you can end up playing easily X equals 3 for this. So you can get your Shaman of the Pact and Were Fox Bodyguard. Uh, same thing, like Collected Company hits all of these creatures. You have 33 creatures in the deck. Over half of your deck is a hit for Collected Company. You are very rarely ever going to miss. And of course, can give you a big burst of damage hitting like Leaf Crown Visionaries, uh, putting War Masters into play with like another elf to then trigger the War Master. Uh, also allows you to trigger the War Master on your opponent's turn. Same with uh, Court of Calling, just to get some of these like cheap elves or whatnot to then just get this and to continue to add pressure to the board. Uh, with all these one mana creatures and of course ways to get them. Uh, get them out and whatnot. Uh, you have 19 lands where you're playing like Blooming Marsh, playing Besaidus, Utility. You got a Forest, Rage of Verge Thicket as a you know a land that comes to play untapped. It gives you the white mana for your Were Fox Bodyguard, Unclaimed Territory, and Secluded Courtyard, being you know cards that you can uh, add mana of any color with the you know choosing a creature type. Uh, as a note, we are going to be getting a card, uh, Cavern of Souls, which is essentially like these, except it gives it uncounterable. So we could see like Secluded Courtyard go by the wayside, uh, potentially, uh, maybe even potentially be, like, being in the deck. And then you just see cards like uh, Cavern of Souls kind of take over. And you'll have like a minimal lands like Blooming Marsh and, you know, uh, Razor Verge Thicket and see more of those lands that will tap for any color and see some wilder you know, tribal, like, uh, combinations and stuff, go away, uh, finally, you have the sideboard, judge is familiar, while not a creature, or not an elf, 
is a creature, but it's not an elf. Uh, sacrifice counter target answer sorcery spell unless controller pays one. So kind of a aggressive-ish card. Can only play uh, pay white mana for it, which is a little unfortunate. It might even be a little bit suspect on the sideboard as well, but uh, allows you to be at least a hair aggressive, getting in the air. And of course, if you get to tag a spell that may like you know a wrath aside from you know uh, supreme verdict you know you can kind of like protect yourself from this and force them to wait an extra turn and with all the power and stuff that you can kind of throw on the board you they might not have that extra turn uh Dranith magistrate your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands you have you know people like uh some of the utility that like the racto sack deck has is being able to like look at some extra cards and then you know choose which ones they want to play or uh, which ones they want to cast and whatnot so uh magistrate definitely has some utility there of course there's probably some other ones i'm not thinking of right away uh but this card i've you know seen play in modern i'm sure it has some home in pioneer sideboards as well uh you have mask vandal which is every creature type it means it's an elf enters you can exile a creature from your opponent's graveyard and ex uh, you exile an artifact or enchantment uh, phyrexian revoker getting to name activated abilities of a card Ma namely uh you can only name a non-land card but it does stop the activated abilities even if they are mana abilities of those things you have Selfless Spirit as protection, Soulless Jailer as just more hate for the graveyard and people that try to cheat things into play. Guardian of the Faith will phase out all of your other creatures when it enters. While it is not a, uh, well, it's not an elf, you do have uh, your mana base kind of supported in a way that you can cast these double white cards, as we see with like Where Fox Bodyguard. Uh, a little less, I mean, a little less easy, I guess, than uh, the Bodyguard, simply for the fact that the Bodyguard is actually an elf and this guardian of the faith is a spirit knight but nonetheless you know this is kind of some more wrath protection uh you have elvish uh, El land of war visionary not elvish visionary when it enters draws a card taps to add a green hit by collected company you'll be able to cast this thing on turn two pretty reliably and again it creates more mana you have reclamation siege to destroy artifacts and enchantments also an elf uh the fourth copy of warefox bodyguard uh yasharn emplaceable earth to let you search for a uh, basic forest card, a basic planes card. You're not going to be able to find the basic planes, but just uh, stopping your opponent from paying life or sacrificing permanents, or non land permanents, excuse me, to cast spells or activate abilities is pretty good, and you can get this out pretty pretty fast and pretty reliably. And if your opponent's like, you know, keeping hands that have like just tons of removal and like no real clock or no substance or anything like that. This card can come down. Your opponent doesn't really, really have anything started when they start drawing into that part of their deck. Uh, they're not really going to be able to do anything with it. I do not want to shop AKH. You stop it. Uh, lastly, uh, Vivian, Monster's Advocate. Uh, you look at the top card of your library at any time. You can cast creatures from it. Uh, allows you to make three threes with its plus, and then its minus. You, uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, you search for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost, and you put it on the battlefield. Uh, I think... Not nearly as explosive as some decks can with this uh, minus ability, but the fact that you just get to make three threes, you know, it's also a way that you can end up getting some sort of card advantage by getting to cast a ton of creatures off of your deck, and then uh, in a pinch just cast, you know, a Shaman of the Pack, Wear Fox, Bodyguard, what have you, and then go and search like a Leaf Crown Visionary or even a War Master, and just kind of uh, snowball into some advantage that way. And that is uh, Obson Elves for the Pioneer format. It is an archetype that we have not seen for a while in Pioneer. Uh, probably hasn't been very good, but usually when you know formats want something with speed, uh, they typically go to the like Boros aggro decks. We've seen it in like the model red aggro decks and so on. But Elves, I think, is an interesting position to where it can get to the board pretty quick and it can actually kind of go a lot wider than the red decks and can go pretty tall as well with some of these. Uh, this version, I think, opting to go pretty wide and having some uh, so having some other options that maybe aren't necessarily good at going taller, but you know you can get them uh, pretty reliably and kind of put that pressure on your opponent. So uh, definitely an interesting take. Obviously it has to be at least pretty decent considering that it did get second place in in the Pioneer Challenge. Uh, five and two it probably just snuck into top eight and, you know, took it in a rain with it, which is awesome. So that's going to do it for me this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please remember to uh, leave a like on the video. Uh, comment down below if there's a specific deck that you want to see next. 
And of course, subscribe to the channel, notification bell, follow the links in the description. That's going to do it for me. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you all in the next one.